Well, let's go back a little. My name is Brianna Suarez, and today we will be teaching you about the importance of pollinators. A pollinator is any animal that moves pollen from one flower to another. This action results in the production of seeds and is necessary for many plants to multiply. Did you know that about 33% of your food is from a pollinator? The most popular pollinator is a bee. This here is a beehive. The cells inside the beehive are typically used to store food and house eggs. Beehives serve several purposes, including the production of honey and pollination of nearby crops. See this empty hole? This is called a cell. These cells are filled up with nectar and are used to make honey. The white wax that is typically seen on a beehive is to cover up these cells. In each hive, there is one queen bee. The queen bee's job is to lay eggs, which will then grow up into more bees. The eggs hatch into larvae and are taken care of by nurse bees. Can you see how every bee has a job in the hive? The bees we normally see day to day are worker bees. They travel from flower to flower collecting nectar and pollen. A bee communicates to another bee through the waggle dance. Most dances look like a figure eight. The pollinators use the sun to show where the closest food source is. Let's make some pollinator pencil tops. Let's go over the materials you'll need. First, you'll need one scissor, three to four pipe cleaners, one pencil, some googly eyes, and hot glue or glue. The next step is to place hot glue wherever you want your pencil topper to start. Next, you'll take the pipe cleaner and wrap it around the pencil like so. Keep in mind there are many different pollinators you can make. The example here is a butterfly, but you can also do a bee if you choose alternating colors. After you're done wrapping your pollinator, you should then cut off the access. Next, we're going to move on to make the antennas of the pollinator. You should cut off about three and a half inches and then fold it in half. Then you should twist the top in between your thumb and pointer finger, which you will later do to make the wings. This is what your antenna should look like all rolled up. In order to hide the base of your antenna, you're going to want to roll back a little bit of your pollinator's body. Place a little bit of glue on the eraser and your antenna should be secured. To make your pollinator's wings, you should use the same motion that you did to make the antennas, twisting the pipe cleaner in between your thumb and pointer finger. Stop about halfway and then flip to the other side. Then repeat with another pipe cleaner of the same color. Reshape the wings as best as possible to make sure they're somewhat even.
Now it's time to apply your wings to your pollinator. Place a strip of glue on the side of the pollinator to secure the first wing. Then repeat with the second wing. The final step is to apply your googly eyes. Place two dots of hot glue and secure your googly eyes on your pollinator. There's the final product of your pollinator pencil top. Make sure you share your photos online. For the next activity, we'll make pollinators out of toilet paper rolls. The materials you'll need is one toilet paper roll, two to three sheets of paper, one scissor, and a hot glue gun. The first step is to wrap pieces of construction paper around your toilet paper roll, in any order you choose. To make a bee, you should use two alternating pieces of construction paper, but to make any other type of pollinator, you can use one entire construction paper color for the entire body. You'll want to secure these pieces of construction paper with hot glue or glue. And there's the base of your pollinator. The next step is to make wings. Using a pencil, trace out the wings and then cut them. Secure the wings on the back of your pollinator. This is what your pollinator could look like with wings. Then you should add eyes by either using googly eyes or out of construction paper. Both should be secured on your pollinator with glue. The last step is to use some leftover pipe cleaners to make antennas. Using your pointer finger and thumb, roll the pipe cleaner to make the antenna. And there's your final pollinator. Did you know that a butterfly is also a pollinator? Butterflies' wings come in all colors of the rainbow. Did you know that butterflies first start out as caterpillars? There are four stages in a butterfly's life cycle. First it starts as an egg, then it goes to a larva, a pupa, and finally a beautiful butterfly. First, a female butterfly will lay its eggs. The caterpillars then grow in these eggs. Once the egg is ready, the caterpillars then hatch. This is also known as a larva. The caterpillar sheds its old skin in order to get new skin. This process of shedding skin is also known as molting. Then the caterpillar changes into a pupa. The caterpillars really just hang upside down in this state. 
The cocoon is also called a chrysalis. In its chrysalis, the caterpillars developed wings. Finally, the caterpillar breaks out of its chrysalis and there's a beautiful butterfly. Then the butterfly lays its eggs and the process starts all over again. This whole transformation is known as metamorphosis. And that's the life cycle of a butterfly. And now let's talk about some Florida native butterflies. A zebra long-winged butterfly is unique because it is able to feed on the flower's pollen as well as the nectar. It is most abundant in South Florida and lives a relatively long life compared to other butterflies having a lifespan of several months. The second butterfly that is native to South Florida is the monarch butterfly. It has a wingspan of 3 to 4 inches. The monarch butterfly is also known as the milkweed butterfly because they only use milkweed plants to lay their eggs. The last butterfly we will be talking about today is the queen butterfly. Adult queen butterflies feed on a variety of flowers, including milkweeds. They love the open sunny areas of woods and yards throughout South Florida. Have you ever seen these butterflies? Now, what about dragonflies? Do you think that dragonflies are pollinators? Did you know? that they have been around for 300 million years. When they first hatch, the larvae or nymphs live in the water for around a year. Having a dragonfly land on your head is actually considered good luck. There are over 5,000 species of dragonflies. They have transparent wings, long bodies, and large eyes. Dragonflies actually love the sun because they have such cold blood. For humans, the dragonfly is most useful in order to eat mosquitoes in the garden. They're usually placed in gardens for this reason. Our next activity is making pollinator wings. First, you're going to want to cut the outline of your wing. Which should turn into this. Then cut four holes using a hole puncher in order to secure your strings. You can decorate with marker, colored paper, or paint. The last step is to tie strings in the holes you punch. Make sure your armhole is not on the decorated side. And there's your final product of the pollinator wings. Now, you may be asking, what are the best plants to plant? I'll help you out with the best host plants to plant for a home garden in Miami. The corky stem passion vine are usually one and one half inch to four inches in length. Insects will use them as a source of nectar and the zebra long winged butterfly will collect pollen from them as well. Rue is known for being used for medicinal and culinary purposes, but if you want all things pollinators like bees and butterflies, plant it. The blue-green leaves have a unique citrus herb scent that are eaten by butterflies. Wild lime is an evergreen shrub to small trees that occur naturally in hammocks throughout Central and South Florida. It's easy to establish, adaptable to a variety of condition, and grows fairly quickly. The flowers of the firebush plant vary in length and attract a wide variety of pollinators including hummingbirds, butterflies, and bees. The Senna Mexicana are usually two to four feet in height and three to six feet in width. Their color is yellow and their fruit color is brown. The Dutchman's pipe vine has a slender stem that can reach 25 to 30 feet in height. It grows in a height by tightly coiling the stem around all available structures. The Kuntai is the only cycad native to Florida. It doesn't produce any flowers or fruits. Instead, it reproduces by seeds in seed cones and pollen in pollen cones. The Florida Keys black bead is a species of flowering plants in the legume family. It may grow up to 15 feet or more. Scarlet sage can grow up to two to four feet tall and up to two and a half feet wide. It can grow year round with high humidity. The final plant is the blue plumago. It can grow up to 20 feet in height. 
They have flowers that bloom in different shades of both blue and white that mainly flower in summer and autumn. Make sure to appreciate pollinators. Little everyday tasks would be impossible without them. Make sure to check us out on Instagram to be in on the buzz. Thanks for watching.